Hello, today we're taking a look at the new Jinmitsu 4040 Reno CNC machine. The latest entry level desktop CNC from Saint Smart. Out the box it comes with a 9000 RPM 75 watt spindle. This is what I'll be using for most of the video to get an idea of what you can and what you can't expect from the Reno out of the box. The motion system for the Reno is belt and V-wheel drive on the X and Y, with Z using rods. Powering the kinematics we have NEMA 23 stepper motors, rather than the common lower torque NEMA 17, usually found on 3D printers, laser engravers and desktop CNC's in the same price range. As the name suggests, you've got a 40 by 40 cm active working area and a built-in MDF spoil board with recessed nuts. Though I would always recommend adding an additional spoil board on top to fit your needs as a first project. For onboard controls we have a power button and the all-important emergency stop, along with ports for USB, COM port for accessories and a connector for the optional offline controller. On the sides and the back we find the belt tensioning systems. Talking about belts, it's worth mentioning the pros and cons of a belt drive system over lead or ball screws. Belt systems are less rigid but have the advantage of moving much faster, something very useful in a machine where you want to use both spindle and a laser. They also have the advantage of potentially less backlash, not needing anti-backlash nuts or a pre-loaded ball screw nut, saving in complexity, parts and price. The key with belts is tensioning. People often fall into the trap of thinking tighter the better. This is not the case here. It will shorten the life of the belts and add backlash from tooth wear. You want them to be just tight enough that there is no sag in the belt and this will stop slipping and prolong the life of your belts. Next we have the Z offset touch probe. This connects on the back of the X axis along with a connector for a 10 watt laser module. This is my biggest issue with the Reno and it's just a bad design that has not been addressed from previous models in Jinmitsu's range. As the probe has nowhere to stow away it ends up getting dragged around the X axis and when it comes to CNC you really don't want to add any potential snag points. So I took the time to jump into Fusion 360 and design a 3D printed magnetic probe holder that could be mounted on the Reno's X axis with just a single M3 screw and a T-nut. This keeps the probe out of the way and is easy to detach and reattach with the use of the magnet. Now let's actually test the machine. I'm going to start with a V cut off on some 2 ply sign laminate. This is very useful material that has two different sheets of plastic fused together. By cutting through the top layer it exposes the colour below and can be engraved with CNC cutting tools or lasers. Here I'm using a 60 degree engraving bit for this V-carve. This will change the thickness of the line by plunging the tapered bit into the material more the wider the line and removing more material. To stop it from going right through I've limited the depth of cut to a maximum of 2mm. This gives very clean defined results in a fast operation. And it's perfect for signs, labelling and DIY projects like control panels for electronics. This leads to the question, 
can the 4040 Reno engrave aluminium. Here I stuck with a 60 degree V-bit and a 0.3mm depth of cut and slowed the feed rate down to 300mm a minute. This will leave a slight burr on the surface, but depending on your desired finish you can face it off or just knock it back with some scotch bright or a high grit sandpaper for a brushed finish. So I'm going to say yes. Out the box with a stock spindle, the Reno 4040 will engrave aluminium. Next we're going to move on to some wood. Here I'm facing off a sacrificial bit of MDF to use as a waste board for some other projects. I wanted to see if the 75 watt spindle could use a 1 inch flat bottom drought a bit. Here I'm just removing 0.3mm of material off the top until I have a flat top tram with the router. As this is a large tool it means going very slowly not to bog down the motor. But that's the joy of a review unit, you can push it to breaking point so other people don't have to. This operation is very slow but due to the small spindle it's extremely quiet. And that is going to be the trade off you have, quiet but slow or fast but loud when it comes to spindle choice. But with a bit of time we get the job done and leaves a nice finish. I'm just going to pop up an example of what a board looks like when your spindle is out of tram. If you find prominent ridges you can feel on the bed, it means your spindle is at an angle and needs to be adjusted to square it up to the bed. Check out James Dean Designs for some excellent guides on the topic and just all round excellent content on CNC. Next we're going to move on to hardwood. In this case, offcuts of black walnut. The 75 watt spindle really struggles using the 1 inch bit here, even reducing the depth of cut. Thank you. 
If we slow the footage back down, you can see the spindle clearly getting bogged down trying to move the tool through the walnut. This is a great recipe for a burnt out motor and a terrible finish. One way to fix this is using a much smaller bit, here a 3.175 compression end mill. This lets us go deeper and faster, but adds to the job time. but it does have a very good finish and won't kill your spindle. Now we're going to actually move away from engraving into actual milling operations. Here I'm using the same bit to cut out some pockets using an adaptive clearing toolpath. This will help by not overloading the spindle and leaving clean cuts. I start with a depth of 0.3mm. This gives me very clean finish. Again it's slow going but very quiet. And depending on your needs, you may want lower noise over speed. I expect your neighbours would too. I took the depth of cut down to 0.6mm and started getting a slightly rougher finish due to the spindle not quite getting a consistent chip load as the spindle slows down under load. But backing off a little could be viable for a roughing pass if you wanted to almost half your job time. But keep in mind these are test settings and tool dependent. Your mileage very much will vary. But it is good to know that out the box you can carve hardwood projects with just the addition of a good quality bit. It's worth keeping in mind that you can always upgrade the stock spindle. Here I've switched out to a Makita trim router using the adapter bracket Sane Smart cells. So what do I like about the Reno and 
Who's it for? Well, the price is compelling, undercutting the competition significantly, and a shrewd attempt at pricing them out of the market with the more for less strategy. I think it would be an excellent machine for someone who wants the function of laser cutting and engraving, and light milling in one package. With such a low price to entry, it would also be excellent out the box for someone learning CAD or CAM. And then as you get more experienced, you could upgrade it to a far more competent woodworking tool with the addition of a better spindle. When it comes to things I don't like, it's hard to complain for the price, but I would have liked to have seen dust covers for the Y axis, as you need to keep them clean for the motion system to continue working. I would have also liked eccentric nuts for the V wheels, to really tune them in and slow down the inevitable wear and tear, but along with the belts they should be considered as consumables. And of course a probe mount would have been nice. Link in the description to print your own. Hope you found this video helpful and if so a like or subscribe would really help the channel. And any questions just leave them in the comments below. Thank you for watching.